Matt Cardona versus Nick Gage. So, the pro, the the reborn wrestling universe saga continues in its forbidden doorness, where Nick Gage pops into existence on AEW Dynamite and is going to fight Chris Jericho in a no DQ match because, of course, we're at that point now where we must have ultra violence because that's kind of thriving now lately outside of WWE and. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the GCW front, the uh, impact in them are seemingly having a collaboration of sorts because Matt Cordona, who's a signed impact wrestler, is showing up on GCW Game Changer Wrestling in a big matchup where he goes ahead and dresses in all black and impersonates Dean Ambrose, aka John Moxley as he's known by now for just for the heck of it because you know the, the commentators were bringing up WWE a lot so might as well bring that up uh, he goes ahead Matt Cordona comes out is dressed in, in, in all black we think it's it, it's John Moxley because John Moxley and Nick Gage have been having confrontations at GCW events and we assume that oh it's going to lead to a match I'm pretty sure it is good to be one down the road, but now we got this added element. He, the, the guy, Matt Cordona does the zombie walk, like, ready to start, does the dirty deeds, aka the paradigm shift, aka the death rider, and long and reality takes his mask off, revealing not John Moxley, but Matt Cordona, Zack Ryder. And the fans go ballistic like really ballistic they hate matt cardona the, the crowd of gcw goes ballistic it, it's ecw like vibes because it's like when mick foley was doing like matt cardona's character seems to be oh i'm from the wwe i'm a made man even though he was for a time i mean, in fact let me quote kevin owens aka kevin steen uh it was kind of but then it wasn't and it's never gonna be again so <laughs> and whatnot and this leads into a brutal fight between nick gage and matt cardona leading to a match at gcw homecoming which shockingly of all on the on the default tab, trending tab for america it was number one an independent wrestling event that's not AEW or wwe was trending at number one normally you don't get that unless you're like really early in the morning if it's new japan but uh yeah this uh i don't typically watch that many death matches like unless you count sammy callahan versus kenny omega and the other and the other stories they did but <laughs> this was oh this was brutal brutal it was brutal and everything like the buckets upon buckets upon buckets of blood spilled all over the ring from matt cardona some some mostly matt cardona there was some blood from nick gage and nick gage is set for his big debut on aew dynamite to fight chris jericho in a no dq match so expect a sequel violence and i'm and i and i'm hoping matt cardona actually shows up just to connect that story thread because of what happened on the mat during the match at homecoming so Nick Gage and, and Matt Cortona, they were tearing the house down this violent match. This is my first match watching GCW, and I'm watching it because of what went down on AEW and what I was here with Matt Cardona. So Pro Wrestling Share Universe and all that. We're getting <laughs> uh, bad. So the violence was up to 11 in this match. Matt Cardona having to go into that world. And then he was trying to be like the WWE Zack Ryder, even though he says Zack Ryder's dead because he's that guy. 
So he's that guy that is trying to get the people to hate him because he's a WWE built wrestler. He's not an independent built wrestler. Like they'll accept John Moxley, they'll accept Kevin Steen, they'll accept El Generico, they'll accept all these guys if they left WWE. But Matt Cardona, he is basically like how H H Kento was treated. Like, Kenta was the Noah pro wrestling guy, then he went to WWE, and then after he was let go, he went back to, he went to Japan and went to New Japan Pro Wrestling, and the fans of both worlds wouldn't accept him because they look at him as, oh, you were the Noah wrestler, and then you went to WWE, so we're the third best option for you? So, like, he was like that guy that wasn't accepted in any world he was in. He wouldn't be accepted in Japan, he wouldn't be accepted in America, he wasn't accepted in America, mostly from WWE, so now he has to join a group of outsiders, the Bullet Club. And now Macro does in that same position. He's been known for 15 years as a WWE guy, and despite WWE's treatment of him at when he was super over, and then their procedural to bury him in order to reverse all the status stuff that says quote shakeup that CM Punk led to with Brian him. <laughs> So now Matt Cardona is now entering this world of violence and oh man oh god and Chris Jericho's theme music you are beautiful on the inside you are innocent personified and I will track you down and sell you out run away i am cold like december snow i am god i i can't i don't remember the last those parts of the lyrics because i'm trying to remember as much as i can and i will track you down and sell you out embraced by the darkness i'm losing the light encircled by demons i fly what have i become now that i've betrayed everyone i've ever loved i pushed them all away and i've been a slave to the judas in my mind is there nothing left for me in the wreckage of my life? My life, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. I become, I become, I become. Judas in, Judas in my mind. I become, I become, I become. I become, I become, I become. Judas in, Judas in my mind. Okay, so there's the, my uh, segue away from that. So yeah, Chris Jericho's music star play. We all were hope everyone was hoping Chris Jericho would come in and fight Nick Gates since he is going to fight him as the pain maker. So yeah, it, it was fun. It, it was kind of fun doing that. It was kind of fun seeing that. Uh, Oh man, I don't know why I just suddenly sang that, but um, okay. But Matt Cardona and 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 Nick Gage like pizza cutters, biting, cuts, deep cuts, blood pouring all over their flesh. By the time Matt Cardona is taken down and whatnot, it looks like like uh um let's see uh. Uh, a group I don't know their names since I don't watch GCW but uh, Ricky Shane Page comes in and whatnot and like RSP and Gage go at this group and RSP hits the stereo and then RSP hits a little blow and Cardona with a pack of tubes and lights up Gage with multiple tubes Cardona hits the Rough Rider and The crowd lost it. They effing lost it. They went at this, ready to kill Matt Cardona for defeating their hero. It's. It was so violent. 
to hear that. It, it was like they lost it seeing this. They lost it hearing that. It's having to hear Matt Cardona is the new game changing wrestling world champion of heavyweight champion of the world. Like they did not accept that. They were throwing bottles, beers, everything. It reminded me when Bully Ray beat won the Impact World title back when they were TNA and Hulk Hogan was part of that storyline. I'm like looking back on it now, you can probably throw garbage at Hogan and he probably wouldn't care. And they kept bringing up Hogan in the commentary. The commentary is a lot different for me. Uh, I know this match isn't for everybody. Not everyone loves deathmatch wrestling, especially this kind of match. But, oh God, I, I, I only tuned in just to see the connected threads, especially when Nick Gage showed up on Dynamite to challenge, to be the next Labor of Jericho. It's, it, it's pretty awesome. We're getting more connectivity with the other side of the wrestling industry. We got traditional wrestling. We got rubber match wrestling. Okay, I, I call it rubber match wrestling because that's, because I, I'm convinced that a lot of these wrestlers secretly replace their bones with rubber in order to move like that. Uh, in my joking may of course, I'm not really thinking they're replacing their bones with rubber to justify how they bounce around like rubber. But, uh, yeah, and you got deathmatch wrestling, hardcore wrestling, you got storytelling wrestling, like, oh god, this is an exciting time to be a wrestling fan and not just rely on WWE to be your source of joy. I mean, like, there's not that much to be joyful about with WWE these days, in my opinion, but that's just me from a fan perspective. But, um... <sighs> brutality at its finest, I think. Brutality at its finest. Uh, pardon my singing of Judas. I have no idea why I wanted to do that because other than the fact that Jericho... Jericho's music played, which I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if they factor that into Dynamite this coming week. So, yeah, Chris Jericho's probably going to try to justify he didn't do it, but, you know, Chris Jericho owns the music, and and the commentator is going in and saying, I don't listen to listen to Fozzy and whatnot because it's mainstream. We're edgelords and whatnot. I'm like, I don't watch DCW, so I don't know. But Nick Cage is one sick son of a bitch. Brutal match. It was so freaking brutal. Uh, and, and the fact that Matt Cordona was thriving off the hate he got from that crowd. He he just ran out of the building like he knew it, it, to avoid getting rioted on because that was the level of heat. He had that much heat with fans. And I was like, oh. And, and I'm not surprised, I, I'm, considering what the commentators were saying all throughout the match, I'm surprised they didn't say, well, that Cardona probably has a chance because, you know, he likes to go ahead and sleep with a hot mess and whatnot, and because Chelsea Green is, you know, Chelsea Green crazy on TV. So I'm surprised they didn't go and reference that in any way possible because they like to be TVMA content. Oh, God. <laughs> It's just a fun time to be a wrestling fan. So, this was NRE presenting my review of Matt Cardona versus Nick Cage for the GCW World Heavyweight Championship at GCW Homecoming. Feel free to check out my other content, check out my other stuff going on. Stay tuned for more. I'll see y'all next time. Take care, everybody. And have a freaking nice day, man. <laughs> Oh god, I can't wait for Dynamite for this continuation, and if they're gonna address it on Impact. <laughs>